Hey everybody, this is Adam, and the video you're about to watch is a part of a series. Now you can watch that entire series for free over at cadjunkie.com with our free seven-day subscription. It is a no-brainer. I definitely recommend you check that out. All right, enjoy. Now in the last video, we created an assembly. We added a part to that assembly. And now SolidWorks has auto-magically launched into this mysterious thing called a sketch. Now, sketches are super powerful. And if you want to make anything at all in SolidWorks, there is roughly a 99.9% .9 repeating percent chance <laughs> that it's going to involve at least one sketch. So pay close attention to this. Now, most sketches in SolidWorks are two-dimensional sketches. That means that in order for it to make sense, we need to be looking directly at the sketch plane. We're out in 3D space now, and we may or may not be facing the thing we're sketching on, which is the front plane. So let's make sure that we are looking directly at our sketch. Let's hit the space bar on the keyboard, and then instead of clicking out here in the viewport, let's head down here to this orientation window and click this icon, which is a plane with a little arrow coming out of it. And this is called Normal 2. You click that, it's going to make us look directly perpendicular to our sketch plane. And we can see that our red axes are looking uh, just like they should on the X and Y axes. Okay, so let's hit the S key, S for shortcut again. And this time our tools are different. That shortcut menu is context sensitive. So it's going to give us different tools depending on what part of the program we're working in at the moment. Right now we are editing a sketch, so it's giving us our sketch tools. Now let's grab the straight slot tool. And over on the left are the settings for that tool. Remember, everything is going to happen over here on the left side of the screen in SolidWorks. Now let's check the box for Add Dimensions, if that happens to be available to you in your version of SolidWorks. And then come back out here and click on the origin of our sketch to get our slot started. Now I'm going to move the mouse out to the right. I'm not dragging, I'm just going to move the mouse until it snaps to horizontal. And then I'm going to type 100 and hit Enter. And that's just going to uh, put in a 100 millimeter constraint on my slot. I can move my mouse out again and just click to eyeball that slot into place and I'm finished. Now notice over on the left the tool is still running. SolidWorks tools automatically keep running until you explicitly exit them. So to drop this tool head over and hit the escape key on your keyboard and now my design tree comes back and our tool is finished. Now to change this diameter all we have to do is double click that dimension, type 20, and hit enter. And there we go. Our slot has updated so that that diameter is now 20 millimeters. Now to 3Dify this smoke and hot shape, let's head over to the features tab here and up to this one called extruded boss slash base. Now since we're looking straight at our sketch, uh, even though this is 3D, it's not going to look like much because it's coming straight toward us. Let's head up to the heads up display at the top of the viewport and drop down the views menu. And this time we can head out in the viewport and click on the view we want to use. This will give us a nice clean isometric view. Now if you're in SolidWorks 2012 or earlier, you won't have that big fancy 3D cube thing, but that's fine. You can use the buttons inside the view menu. Now, once again, on the left side of a screen, we have a bunch more tool settings. I told you, I wasn't kidding. The left side of our screen is where everything happens. Now, let's go to direction one here and down to the thickness. We're going to set that to two millimeters and hit enter. And then click the green checkbox to drop that tool. And if we click out in the viewport, we now have a 3D thing. We're done. We just modeled something. So exciting. All right, now let's practice moving around a little bit. We know that we can usually, in most cases, we can hit the space bar and it'll pop up our little view menu. And uh, we can also click on the heads up display at the top of the screen. Great, those are both really useful and bulletproof. So you can use those for, uh, for most things. It's really easy to get around your model really quickly just by using those commands. Now, I like to do it using this thing called gestures with the right mouse button. So let's head up to Tools and down to Customize at the very bottom. And there's a tab called Mouse Gestures. We want to make sure that Enable Mouse Gestures is checked. 
and that we have eight gestures enabled. And once we have that, we could close that up. And if I right click and drag in the viewport, you'll see I have a bunch of views to choose from. And it's really straightforward to get to them. You just drag your mouse over the one you want, and that does it. You don't have to click, nothing like that. Just drag in a direction, and you move your view super rapidly. It's a lot quicker than any other method uh, of moving your camera in SolidWorks. Now, to manually move your view, all you have to do is drag the middle mouse button, and that's going to rotate the stuff in your screen. And if your mouse has a scroll wheel, usually pressing down the scroll wheel works as a middle mouse button. So that's how you're going to see me rotating the view on my screen. I'm using a Wacom pen, and usually I set the uppermost stylus button to be my middle mouse and use that. And then I use the lower stylus button as my right mouse. But whatever works for you. All right, so it's middle mouse to rotate. Hold control and middle mouse to pan. Shift middle mouse to zoom. Now, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can also zoom using that. But stylus users like me don't have scroll wheels, so uh, I tend to keep my left hand on those control and shift keys at all times, just so that I can get around really quickly. Now, if you find yourself lost, right, you zoom out and everything's just gone, and uh, you can't figure out where it is, you can always use one of those standard views to get the things back fit on your screen. Now, one tiny little side note before we stop. When you right click and you see these gestures, those are customizable and context sensitive. So I do tend to customize them ever so slightly. So if you want to use them exactly the way I do, head to Tools, Customize, back to Mouse Gestures. And down here you'll notice that you can set a different set of gestures for parts, assemblies, drawings, and sketches. I like for my sketch uh, gestures to be the same as my part and assembly gestures. So you can see here that in parts and assemblies, our view commands are mapped to our, uh, to our gesture menus. So I do the same thing for my sketch. I would set these to be identical to the assembly and part ones as well. And you just have to do those one at a time, but fortunately uh, you only have to do it once and you're done. All right, practice time. Let's put in some time just navigating around. Practice rotating your view, using the, uh, the view menus to get around, using your gestures, whatever. Just get used to it. And in the next video, we're going to add another part to our assembly.